started. You got the notice that I'm recording, right? Yep. Okay, good. Welcome, everybody. My name is Sam. I am joined by Stephen Lazar. He is a senior at Siena College. He plays on the men's basketball team, and he is majoring in biology. Stephen, how are we doing? I'm good. How are you? I am doing well. Stephen, wanted to ask you some questions about basketball. First off, explain to me how your tenure with the basketball team has been so far. Uh, pardon me, sorry, I didn't hear that one. I didn't cut out. Okay. Explain to me how the tenure you've had with Siena basketball has been so far. Oh, it's been it's been great, you know. Uh, uh, my uh, freshman year was a little weird with COVID and everything. Uh, you know, not playing at the MVP and kind of just that whole interaction that COVID year was kind of weird with uh, just how everything was run. Um, you know, come sophomore year, it was like kind of going right back into the swing of things the way and so the NCAA basketball usually was run. So I think it was really cool. You know, my last year, my junior year was really cool. We got to go to Italy, you know, spend a lot of time with some really great guys. So, so far, I mean, my D1 career has been amazing and i've loved it at cm that's awesome are you thinking of taking a COVID year uh probably not um my main goal uh after i graduate is to go to med school so i'm going to be applying for that pretty much when i graduate and then trying to work get some money and uh improve my resume a little bit i take it then no basketball involved on any cylinders so the school you're going to apply to not playing there yeah, most likely not. It'll also be very, I think it'd be really tough if, if I were, would play basketball there, just with the curriculum and everything, but probably not, probably not. Okay, well, about basketball, again, explain to me what it was like when you came here to Siena in 2020. Yeah, it was weird. So um, they originally made all international students and then anyone who was considered a uh, a hot state for COVID we had a pretty much quarantine for two weeks when we first came here so I was in quarantine for two weeks but we uh we had some zoom events with the team where we got to know each other and had some bonding experiences uh coach Carmen and some of the other coaches would bring us food every now once in a while which was really nice we didn't have to have a saga in COVID as as much but it was really nice having the coaches bring some home cooked meals. Um, it was weird during the year just because uh, we had like practice in different groups just for COVID safety. Um, so I was in one group and then there was another group with another guys. Uh, and then right around, I think, November. Yeah, it was right around November because that's when I think our season was supposed to start. Um, I think we were supposed to go to Mohegan Sun or something for a tournament, or we had planned for it to happen. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, but right around then, I th think one of our guys got COVID on our team, or one or two of our guys got COVID on our team. And so we had to go into quarantine for two weeks, um, which, you know, wasn't great, but I think it was inevitable just the way life was like back then. You know, COVID was going everywhere. Um, but then we got out of that quarantine, you know, went some practices. I don't know when, but I remember that that year, it was pretty much every time we got out of quarantine, someone else would test positive. And so we'd have to go back into quarantine for two weeks, which was annoying because, you know, it felt like we had just gotten out and we were just starting to get back in the swing of things. And, oh, we got to go oh. back in. Yeah. But uh, there was a couple, but we did, um, we did manage to get some games in, in between quarantines and stuff like that. And then near the end, once... Sooner or later, once everyone pretty much on our team got it, uh, we didn't really have to quarantine anymore. Uh, so we're more in the full swing of things with basketball. But it was weird, though, because we played the majority of our games um, on campus in the UHY where the girls play, just because the MVP wasn't available. But I remember that um, we had, I think, like a two-month winter break that year. So I think from, like, Thanksgiving – till january end of january kind of a thing and so pretty much all of our games then we were on campus that entire two months and all of our games were just in the uhy but it was funny because like there's no fans allowed 
So it was just literally us and the other team. And then our benches were all very like spaced far apart from each other. And even the seatings in like for each team, like where we sat was even like spaced out far apart just to follow COVID protocol, which is weird because, you know, we're all cheering, but at the same time, we're also so far apart cheering. So it was, it was just a weird experience, but, you know, we made do with what we had and, uh, you know, it was still a really fun experience though that freshman year. How did it feel coming out of COVID? So next two seasons, how'd you feel? Yeah. So, uh, after that first season, I kind of, the way things have been going, you know, there was the vaccine that came out and I think Sienna had a requirement for vaccines. Um, so I had expect, I had expected just myself that, you know, we'd probably be getting back into the full swing of things with how, uh, just how Sienna usually ran a basketball season, you know, down with the MVP, having all the fans coming up and stuff like that. But of course, I did expect that there would be some COVID protocols just because we'd be just coming out of the pandemic. Um, but that like that first year, I didn't expect it to be, I guess, as big of a jump back into things. You know, I think it was very still it was still very, very active, you know. Um, but you can even see now, like we're still kind of reintroducing things that they used to do way back before COVID. So, I mean, I think now we're probably still more. I think now we're probably more fully back to way things were before COVID than that first sophomore, than my first sophomore year. And then since my junior year as well. Um, but I think it was really cool, you know, coming out of COVID and then kind of going playing the MVP in front of like big crowds and stuff like that. I think is really cool. Now you're a walk-on explain to yeah. the viewers here about what being a walk-on is like for you. Yeah. So, I mean, uh difference between, you know, a scholarship player and walk-ons is that walk-ons don't have scholarships. Um, you know, I mean, it's uh, that's pretty much the only major thing, you know, is just that, uh, you know, we pretty much have to pay for school ourselves and stuff. But, uh, you know, it's still, you know, we're still full members of the team. We still get all the gear, you know, we still practice, we still travel, you know, we still do everything that a regular scholarship player would have. It's just that we're uh, not on scholarship, but we're still, you know, full-time members of the team and still get to, enjoy all the perks of being an NCAA athlete. Do you have any sort of position on the team being a walk-on, especially because you have the most seniority out of all the players? Uh, I think um, just being that I am a senior and that I've kind of been through, um, just because I've been through, you know, pretty much three whole teams, you know, I think every single year we've had like major roster changes. Um, so we've had a lot of players come in. I've seen a lot of, you know, talented players. Like, you know, I played with Jalen Pickett, Manny Camper my freshman year. Um, you know, just the experience that comes with being a senior and just being in, you know, NCAA Division One basketball for four years. Just that, what that experience brings to the table, I think I'm able to offer a lot of insight uh, to the guys and provide a lot of wisdom to them as to, you know, what's expected at this level and how we should be playing, how we should be, kind of operating i think last basketball question and this one is more about your performance what do you think is there any game that has stood out to you in your career so far obviously the season's not over yet it's a good one uh i think one game that i always remember and i always like always puts a smile on my face is i think it was my so yeah, it was my sophomore year when we played Iona at home it was the gold rush game against Iona and you know and we won it was a great 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 feeling that we beat Iona you know they're besides us at that time they were they were the top team to beat so and it's a big rivalry game and also it's a gold rush game as well so a lot of people there you know the stands are all it's a sea of gold out there in the stands and I remember when we won I go up to go and you know get to the line to shake the other team's hand but then I just see this rush of the crowd just storm the court. And then I'm just like looking at the other team. I'm like looking back and forth. I'm just like, oh. and they run into the crowd and everything. It was amazing. It was so cool. It was so cool. If you want me to blow your mind, that was two years ago today. Yeah. Really? 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 I remember. Oh, I was wow. There. Two years today, man. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that was quite the thriller. I could not believe you guys uh, knocked out Patino. And you, you did it twice. And then obviously, you know, last year, guys got the revenge on you guys when you went to Heinz and now we have Tobin Anderson. Yeah. 
Well, that's great hearing about your basketball history. And now that you're switching gears to something totally not basketball related about medical yeah. school, explain to me a little bit about your aspiring hopes and dreams in that realm. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I guess ever since I, ever since I came to CNN, I always kind of had that goal that I was going to do something in medicine or something science related. Um, I love science and everything like that, everything to do with it. Like all my classes, I just nerd out to all of them. Um, so I've always kind of had that image that I was going to do something medicine or science related. Um, so I guess after, after I graduated, what I'm planning to do, I was planning to apply in August. And so the way applications work, when I apply in August, if I do get accepted anywhere, I won't, I won't actually be able, I won't attend medical school until the following, the following August. So if I get accepted this round, I won't be going until 2025, yeah, August, 2025. Yeah. You excited? You nervous about graduating and starting uh, the new chapter? You know, I think, uh, as with everything is a bittersweet moment, you know, uh, I think it's really exciting that I'm moving on to a new chapter in my life, you know, especially one that you know, I've been playing basketball since I was in like grade one, pretty much. So, you know, moving on to like a new part of my life or, you know, I'm going to still be playing basketball, you know, at, you know, rec games or something like that, Not to. but like, but not playing at such a high level anymore, I think is going to be a bit of a, I think it would be a bit of a transition. Um, you know, so I guess it's a little bitter in that end that I'm, you know, kind of moving on my life without something that was such a big part of my life before. Um, but I'm also excited to see what that brings. And then again, too, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm almost done my, my collegiate career, you know, so it's a little, again, it's a little, uh, I guess a little uh, upsetting in that point, you know, that it's finally coming to an end as all things do. But, uh, again, like you said, I'm really excited to see where this next chapter of my life will take me. Never stop learning. Never stop learning. Yep. Do you have any other plans aside from that? Because, you know, careers can change. Uh, you mean besides med school? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've always also kind of like, you know, uh, danced with the idea of maybe pursuing a PhD if I wasn't going to go to med school. Um, you know, I think research is something that's really cool, you know, discovering new things. Um, so if I hadn't chosen med school or maybe, who knows, maybe I, I will change my mind, maybe pursue a PhD. But as far as right now, I think I'm very, you know, foot feet in the sand with going to med school. Um, you know, and of course you know, I can't, you know, med school is a lot, a lot of schooling, you know, there's four years and then you got training afterwards. So there's a lot of years ahead and I can't really predict that far in advance what exactly the future will bring for me. But, you know, I think I know a general scope, at least as to what I can expect. That's awesome. Well, Stephen Lazar, all I'm going to say as I end it here is I have a crowd of guys that sit behind my parents when we go to the Siena games. And they're often like, especially when we're either beating a team or losing to a team, they're like, put Steven in, put Steven in. And they go absolutely raucous when you go into the game. Yeah, I hear I hear a couple of those guys, you know, behind the bench every now and then. So it's kind of funny hearing that, but. Yeah, I, definitely I think the same thing as them because you're a very talented player and it sounds to me like you're a very talented soon to be MD. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's Stephen Lazar, everybody. I'm Sam Doherty. Thank you all for watching.